Hey guys, how is it going this evening? So it is about um, 3 in the morning actually. It's Tuesday, April the 24th. And trading actually has no sleep schedule, guys. If you are a dedicated trader like myself, you don't really have 9 to 5 kind of hours. Lately, I haven't been waking up 9 to 5. Lately, I've just been kind of trading at all hours. Whatever, it wakes me up. So I actually fell asleep about... Ooh, three hours ago by accident so um because i was trying to short eos but it didn't really go as planned because i fell asleep right so instead i actually caught the bottom and if you guys go take a look at my last few tweets there very good profit that i've had today you guys have to remember the characteristics of a successful trader right you have to be you got to be hard working guys like you got to be such a good hard worker myself i'm actually probably the one of, i'm one of the laziest people that you guys will ever meet in real life okay i firmly believe in um i'm like I, i'm the kind of guy where if you had to get something done and you had to get it done fast they'd probably choose me to do it because I'm lazy. And because I'm lazy, I'll probably end up finding the easiest way to do it in the shortest amount of time, right? So think of it like that, where lazy people, they, they, they like to find shortcuts. But at the same time, right, when it comes to trading, I have a very different type of mentality where um, I, I really do like to focus on making sure that um, I put in the hard work every single night because if I don't put in the hard work every single night, then I'm going to fall behind. So right now, as it stands, I need to make sure that I get caught up with Bitcoin. So when I actually wake up in the morning, I'm going to have a very good idea of where we actually left off, right? Because I haven't really been too caught up with Bitcoin. I've been very much so in tune with EOS, if you guys haven't noticed. It's kind of like my child right now. And I've also been shorting a lot of um, IOTA as well. Um, lately, I've been shorting a lot of IOTA. I've got a fairly decent sized position right now for a short on IOTA since about 218. I'm in a short for, I'll just show you guys it actually. I uh, never mind. I don't even have it open right now. I'm too lazy to open it. So, um, anyways, I'm just talking about generally the characteristics of a uh, of a trader, right? Got to make sure that you guys are very hardworking. You cannot slack off, guys. No matter what, okay? You cannot slack off as a trader. You cannot think that if you don't put in the time, that things are going to come very natural. I promise you, it doesn't work like that, guys. When it comes to trading, okay? You got to make sure that you put in that hard work. You got to put make sure that you put in the effort. Because if you don't, the guy to your left or the guy to your right, he's going to put in a lot more time than you. And if he does actually put in a lot more time than you, then you know he's probably going to be much more successful. So please don't treat trading as as a kind of job where there's a lot of shortcuts, right? There's definitely no shortcuts when it comes to um, trading. You got to make sure that you hone your skills. You got to make sure that you're dedicated. You got to make sure that you put in the time to study technical analysis. You got to make sure you dedicate the time to study your mistakes. Uh, you got to study your successes, but especially your mistakes, because if you don't, then unfortunately, you're not going to be able to learn from them, right? The most valuable lessons actually come from losing. They don't come from winning, guys. Uh, anybody can win all the time, okay? You can have a really great win streak, um, but, but it's when you actually lose. That's where it's very demoralizing. And if you get demoralized, then hey, maybe you can actually spend a little bit of time to learn what is going on. And um, you can you know take a few steps back to actually evaluate how you can improve your game. So think of it as a very systematic type of approach where um, you can only become a better trader if you will lose, right? So please don't feel bad. I was recently talking to one of my friends. She's, um, I shouldn't even say where she's from, um, but she's, she's from, um, she's from Africa, right? And, um, she was just talking generally about how she lost a big amount, right? And like my general advice to people is when you lose, be grateful of your situation because you have a very strong chance to improve. And one of the biggest advice that I really need to give to people, okay, guys, it's, this is really important advice. To, if a trader were to ask me what is the biggest piece of advice you can give to someone, it is this right here, this one rule. Never play your entire account. Never ever. I'm gonna I'm just gonna put my mic closer. Never play your entire account and only play a very small portion of it. I'm talking about if you guys have a one thousand dollar account, please don't play your one thousand dollar account. Play two hundred and fifty dollars of it, okay? 
play a very small bank role because the most important thing is to gain valuable lessons, not to actually make profit. Please get that mentality out of your head. I'm just moving my um, my desk a little bit. Please get that mentality out of your head where you might be thinking that if I play more money, I'm actually going to be able to win more money. That's a really bad mentality to have. You need to adopt the mentality of, I am going to make good trades because the good trades will ultimately lead to money, okay? So if you focus on just chasing money, you might be making really bad decisions. But if you make sure that you focus on making really good trades, the money just becomes a bonus in the end. So it's a lot about mentality, guys, okay? I really mean it. You guys got to sharpen this right here before you can make this right here. Because if you're not really sound emotionally, despite how you, how goofy you guys see me, okay, you could, there's no doubt in my mind how goofy people see me. And I know for a fact that I'm actually very goofy myself as well, right? I'm a goofball. I joke around a lot. I make inappropriate jokes. I have a lot of fun with my viewers and the people that I engage with. But at the end of the day, you guys have seen my live trades. I'm very disciplined. I'm very hardworking. And I'm very um, focused on, on my goal, right? And focused on doing technical analysis. So please remember, especially as well, if you're playing margin, do not whatsoever play everything in your margin account, okay? This is the number one way to get liquidated. X marks the spot. You guys are going to feel the wolf pack, okay? And trust me, it's going to really, really hurt if you guys get liquidated. The biggest newbie mistake, unfortunately, is, hey, I'm actually just going to play my entire bankroll right here and play in my margin account. Well, guys, if you play your entire bankroll in your margin account, guess where it's actually going to end up leading you ultimately, okay? It's going to end up leading you to disaster, okay? You play your entire margin account, I guarantee that first of all, you're greedy, you're, you're chasing your profit, first of all, rather than chasing good trades, right? That's a fact, okay? Secondly, you clearly don't have the emotional discipline and the strict discipline to stick to your stop losses. That's a fact as well, because if you don't understand rule number one, which is don't play your entire bankroll, then you clearly don't also don't understand strict stop losses and how they prevent you from mitigating or how they how they help you mitigate your losses. Mitigating your losses is incredibly important. You need to know how to preserve your money. You need to know how to protect your money. If you don't know how to preserve and protect your money, how the heck can you grow it? It just doesn't make any sense at all, right? Yeah, so it's kind of the nature of the game. So what I really do recommend to a lot of people, once again, is don't play. Don't even margin trade, guys. Don't even margin trade. You guys might see me margin trade, but you need to understand very clearly that I understand the risks very well, and I only margin trade, not because I actually need to leverage. That's a big misconception that people say. I mar margin trade because of one reason mainly. It's because on Bitfinex, it actually shows you your position size, right? And it shows you your profit and your loss. If you play in your exchange account on Bitfinex, it actually doesn't show you any of that at all. It only shows you your orders, etc., right? So Bitfinex, I'm completely used to playing margin. I can actually do these calculations in my head. I'm used to doing calculations of margin in my head, and I completely understand all the risks associated with margin trading. Not only that, I'm more of a, I guess, more of an experienced trader, right? You can call me a professional trader, whatever, because I do this for a living. Not that I'm any type of professional, as you guys know. I'm just a goofball sitting at home in my... PJs every day and some random dumb t-shirt just trading for a living and I'm doing okay at it. But I understand the, the risks, all the risks associated with margin trading. And you guys also need to get that mentality in your head as well that margin trading is one of the riskiest things you can do. If you guys have not seen my margin trading video, now is the time to go check it out, okay? My margin trading video is lesson number six, margin trading long, shorting, leveraging. If you don't understand all of the math behind my actual trading, uh, my video for lesson number six there of margin trading, 
you guys are not equipped to trade, honestly. You're not equipped to margin trade whatsoever yet. If you can't do the math like that in your head and you understand all the consequences and the risks in your head, and if you actually can't stick to your stop losses, then unfortunately, you guys should probably take a step back, okay? Because I promise you that the greed will be so overwhelming that you guys will want to play more money. You'll want to play your entire bankroll because you'll want to actually make more of a profit and then it's just going to lead to disaster, okay? I've been there, guys. I've been there three years ago. Trust me, I know all about it back in the Poloniex days, okay? Back in the Poloniex days, man, um, yeah, um, I'm not kidding you guys in any way that, trust me, I've, I've been through all of it, and I'm giving you guys, like, I'm more of a seasoned person in crypto, right? I've been in the crypto game for a long time, guys. Maybe not trading, but I've been in crypto for a long time, and I understand trader mentality in general, right? And because of my background in mathematics and engineering, the math definitely helps. So I just want to, the reason I'm doing this YouTube channel and all this, you know, shebang, whatever for you guys is because um, I just genuinely care about you guys. That's the honest truth. If I didn't care about you guys and I didn't actually want my viewers to succeed and the people who follow me to succeed, well, I would actually be monetizing myself in some way to actually make a ton of profit off of you guys. Because let's face it, if I have I have 170,000 followers or something total online, if I monetize myself in the smallest possible way by charging some sort of subscription or by selling something, I could literally make bank off of you guys. And you guys know that. Really, I could make bank off of you guys and it'd be really easy with 170,000 followers. I mean, if I wanted to make a subscription package of some sort, we're just going to do the math in front of you guys. Okay, 170,000 people, let's assume even 0.0. 5%. That's 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 a uh, bad math right there. 175,000 people and we'll say even 1% of the people bought something off of me, okay? They bought like a $50 package a month. I'd be making about $87,000 a month off of you guys if I wanted to, okay? Think about that. Is it realistic if I sold to 1% of my followers and they bought some sort of $50 package from me where I gave like a seminar to these people or I, I um you know customized some special package for them. Yeah, it's really realistic. If I want to make money off of you guys, trust me, I, I could, okay? But I'm not here to do that. I'm here to give you guys actual real advice because of stuff that I've been through myself because I just don't want people to make some of the same mistakes that I've made myself, right? So it's it's very genuine and sincere where I, I just want you guys to succeed and I, I'm not here to take your money. So I know that I might be preachy a lot and I might be talking a lot about tons of things, but at the end of the day, guys, I'm just here to try to help you. And I hope that you guys understand that despite how cocky I might be, despite how arrogant I might be, despite how obnoxious I might be, despite how stupid I might be sometimes, whatever name you want to call me, right? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a human at the end of the day. I think that I have okay values. You know, I think I come from a pretty good family of just genuinely wanting to help people. So please, guys, do not play your entire margin account. The number one thing that I hear all the time is I got liquidated, okay? I got liquidated. I will never get liquidated in my life again. <laughs> Trust me, guys. I am not one of those people that will ever hold a position and pray. I will manage my position. I will add to my short. I will add to my long. I will reduce my base price. I will shed my risk accordingly when and if I have to. But because I understand how to manage my position, how to dollar cost average, how to have, have, account for exposure in the market, how to make sure that I can, can calculate win expectancy for formulas. I know how to calculate position sizes, etc. right? I use spreadsheets to, to help me calculate all day. Um, I don't really use spreadsheets as much, actually. I should say that because everything's done in here, guys. I can make calculations like that in my head, right? And um, yeah, like I, I just feel really bad because in the past four days, I've heard of so many people actually getting liquidated and it just doesn't really make me happy in any way. So um, please, please try your best. Don't play your entire position size, guys. And whatever you do, just don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. Close your eyes. Close your eyes when you're about to take a loss. Click on that X button. Just close your eyes and boom, click on that X button and just take a deep breath after and say to yourself, I protected my money. Okay, just say to yourself, I protected my money. I, per I preserved my money because if you don't know how to protect and preserve your capital, then you actually don't know how to grow it as well. Okay, 
guys, please, you got to understand what I'm saying. You got to really understand, like take it all in and, and please understand that you, the, your goal is not to grow your money. Okay. Your goal is not to grow your money. Your grow, your, your goal is to protect your money that you've earned. Okay. Which is, comes down to risk management. You have to protect that hard earned dollar that you guys have made already until you know how to protect it. Then you'll be able to grow it accordingly. Okay. So, um, and yeah, like that's kind of all I want to say. I kind of went into a really long 15 minute speech here. Okay. About, um, just, it's kind of just words of wisdom about what's been going on. So, um, yeah, let's go into coin market cap here and just take a look at what's been going on, right? So we go to coin market cap and congratulations, guys. We have broken well over four hundred billion dollars in the market cap, which is a phenomenal place to be. We actually saw four hundred and twenty billion. Four twenty is a really good number. <laughs> For all the people out there, we're seeing some monstrous gains from EOS right now. There's been a lot of fundamental news where some big companies want to invest $100 million in EOS. That was announced about 16 hours ago. It was also added to an ex a Chinese exchange, which ended up booming the price of EOS. Hence why I've been incredibly active on EOS. And also it overtook Litecoin, which is a very monumental occasion, right? Monero. Oh, sorry, Dash, Tron, double-digit hitters, Icon, double-digit, Bitcoin Gold, double-digit, Verge, wonk, wonk. You guys know how Verge sucks? You guys know how Verge sucks? When every coin ha looks like this, rally, 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 rally. When every coin is green across the board, you can tell a coin sucks, Okay. When, well, Bytum is an exception because it had a massive run prior, prior to that. But when you see a coin that is literally sideways, okay, after the Pornhub announcement, that is how you know a coin sucks, in my personal opinion, right? Just think about it for a second. How could you go sideways when Bitcoin rallies? Hmm, Interesting. Let's look at another coin that goes sideways. I don't even see anything that's on sideways. Waves. I remember getting into this ICO, guys. Okay, I remember getting into this ICO two years ago, three years ago. I bought... Um, I'm not kidding. I'm going to tell you guys a story. Okay, I thought I was going to get rich with this ICO. When, when was the Waves ICO? Let's check it out. Waves ICO. Um... I don't remember when it was actually, okay? It was my first ICO that I actually participated in, and I, I kid you not that I thought that I was going to get rich from it. Like, um, when was the Waves ICO? I don't remember when Waves ICO. Um, must have been like 20, 2016 or, yeah, 2016 or something like that, okay? I thought I was going to get rich with them, and, and it was the first ICO that I actually bought. And I put in, like, I think $2,000, right? And it was so disappointing. And that's when I learned that um, I'm probably going to become a better technical analyst than an ICO investor. <laughs> so it's, like, um, something that I'm not really going to touch for a really long time. I decided to say to myself there. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought I'd share, like, a really, really ridiculous story with you guys, which was not too ridiculous at all. So let's get into this Bitcoin technical analysis. I'm just sitting back on my chair. There we go. So, all right, so we see historical data. Today is probably going to be a very high trending volume for the past 24 hours. And I believe that's going to be almost as high, but slowly declining for the past few days, uh, for the next few days, rather, right? We were at $6 billion, $6 billion, 6 .9, and then all of a sudden we jump up to the 92 to 9300 range. And here we are hitting $8,300, right? If you guys take a look at my post, um, I've been talking about eighty-two to eighty-three hundred dollars for who knows how long, guys. Three, four days now. I'm just gonna take a look at anyone from three days ago, okay? Yeah, I'll take a look at whatever Bitcoin from even five days ago, okay? Uh, was this no, not five days ago? Let's say from three days ago, right here, right there three days ago, I've been talking about a rally to 92 to 9300 as a one case scenario. And I've also been talking about an eight case scenario as well. And there were some specific cases where I actually gave very, very specific trade setups for you guys. Okay. 
So here's um, might this might be one actually right here. No, this is not one. Um, it's important that you guys understand that I'm here. I always give two possible scenarios. I give bull and I give bear scenarios, right? And it's important to have both scenarios because we need to account for unforeseen paths. And if we can actually account for unforeseen things like this, it actually allows us to become a better trader overall, in my personal opinion, okay? If you guys can see both ways where it's trending and what it's doing, then when it actually does happen, then you're not gonna really be that surprised. What I was recommending to a lot of people is this example. Buy 25% of position or 25% of position bought on the breakout of 89.50, right? Key thing to do was to buy a little bit right there. And another thing you could have done was add more to position upon breakout above 90.67, okay? If you guys had followed that, it would have actually had a dollar cost to average of a fairly reasonable price. And then you would have actually had a very short day trading opportunity to gain about 2.44% there. And what I had also suggested for the past few days was keep an eye on a break above 89.50, Though the clear rally to 92 to 9300 range would be when we break the interim swing high of 9067, okay? Generally speaking, a bullish count is validated by a break above 9067 to the target 92 to 9300 range. And um, we actually hit it with flying colors, guys. I, it's been a while since I've been off on Bitcoin. I've been giving bullish and bearish counts, and whichever one plays out, they've been spot on guys i honestly yeah it's been it's been really easy to predict bitcoin just put it that way then the bearish count is validated by two criteria a break outside that triangle right this one right there and also a break below 8616 now this is not me trying to toot my own horn this is me trying to drill inside of your heads that it is important to evaluate both bull and bear scenarios. And once you can accommodate for these types of bull and bear scenarios, you can plan with some possible alternate paths as well, because when it does happen, then you're gonna be very much so prepared. So let's say in hindsight that the bear scenario actually played out, well, you're just gonna wait for a break outside the triangle, you could have shorted, then, but the most important thing to see was to see if it was going to level off near 86.16 or the 8500 range, right? Then if it did there, then you could have actually laddered and started dollar cost averaging and you could have started buying. So that was a, definitely a possible scenario. Then we had the bullish scenario, which also prepared us to dollar cost average in case it did break upwards. So we can prepare for a decent risk to reward ratio of about 2.7 to 1, which is pretty much exactly what happened. So by the way, guys, um... Yeah, make sure you're upvoting myself on Steemit. That's how I keep everything free, guys. So if you guys don't know, um, you can go to any of my posts, right? Uh, I, I have my wallet is entirely public, if you guys don't know. Um, I get about $10 a day on Steemit. And <laughs> believe it or not, $10, $15 a day on Steemit, guys. It's enough for me to monetize myself and my, for my, you know, YouTube, whatever, which is like nothing at all. YouTube pays me like $50 a day for my videos, which... You know, it's not much at all, but um, it actually makes me happy enough to keep everything free. And that's why I'm not going to ever have any content. Although, what do you guys think of this? Okay, let me know what you think of this idea. And this is something that, um, something that I would charge for because it's important for me to bring this up with you guys to actually talk about it. What I am thinking of doing is actually having a very small class, okay? A very small class to teach, the first topic would be RSI, okay? And I wanna have only 100 students in this class where I would charge literally like $20 a head, which is absolutely nothing, and it would actually be like a three hour class, okay? A three hour class with um, a, a break in between, okay? With a break in between, like we'll have, we'll go for an hour and a half and we'll go, you know, take a break or something, then we'll go for another hour and a half. And I only want 100 people in the class and the first 20 people or 100 people that pay the $20 will basically get in the class 
and it'll be very structured. Okay, it's going to be super structured. We're going to spend about uh, you know half the time um, going over specific examples. Okay, and then because I only have a hundred students, I can actually guarantee that I'll be able to spend the other half of the time answering a lot of questions and answers. So it'll be half training. Like it, it'll be a more of a beginner to intermediate type of class, and then the other hour and a half, lots of question and answers. And I think that for twenty dollars, for literally an hour. Um, you know, and for three hours of time, it's a good thing to do, right? And the reason I'm charging is just because it's first come, first serve, just to make it very fair to the public as well, and to accommodate for a little bit of my time, since it takes away from me trading, and it'll probably end up taking me about two hours to prepare the course as well, right? And of course, it's going to take a little bit of time just to um, to get everything ready, right, etc. So. I will never charge anybody for anything until I actually go over it with you guys to see what you think of this idea of mine, just to, for a small way for me to uh, monetize myself. And, you know, $20, honestly, for th a three-hour class, um, for a three-hour class is um, kind of nothing at the end of the day when you think about what you're getting out of it. And it also benefits me as well because, well, first of all, $20 is nothing to a lot of people, right? For a three-hour awesome very structured, detailed question and answer with intermediate to beginner type of RSI analysis, very formal structured learning. And it also accounts for my time as well. And of course, 20 times 100 is $2,000 for my pocket for about five hours of my time, right? Which is, um, I don't, I don't know if that seems like it sounds kind of like a lot to some people, but once again, I'll, I'll never go over something without you guys actually, um, without you guys actually giving me feedback, right? So just let me know your thoughts on that, right? Because I might actually get the ball rolling. Um, yeah, anyways, that's it. So let's get back into this Bitcoin technical analysis, guys, okay? Now that we've kind of uh, summarized um, and just kind of caught everybody up with um, what has been going on, remember, guys, you need to put in the time to study what has been going on, and you need to make sure that you study at the end of every single day. So... Um, if you guys notice right here, this is kind of like the resistance area, right? This is kind of like the hard resistance area. Yeah, it's like it's it's really difficult for me to see us just pushing past this point right now. We're facing a super massive resistance zone that actually extends pretty far out. Like if you guys look at it, you know what I'm saying? Like take a look at it, like right there, right here. Uh, that's such a big arrow. They need to resize this. You know, right there as well, like these are massive resistance zones. Okay, uh, take a look at it right here as well. I need to sleep, like right after this, I'm going to head to bed. Um, you know, right here as well. Um, you know, like just generally around this whole region. This whole region is a strong resistance zone right now. Yeah, that's a super strong resistance zone that I, I'm ha I'm having a lot of trouble believing it could break out of it today or even tomorrow or the next few days because I think that when things like this happen, when we reach a very critical uh, number, right, which we actually have done already, we got to make sure that we anticipate where possible support zones can actually be. So now... We take a look at a support zone, right? Like we don't really have any strength that's losing right now. We look on a daily. It actually finished with a really decent candle yesterday, right? Very decent candle on the four hour. We didn't really start rallying until about 11 p.m., a little bit later in the day. But we have to acknowledge that because we had so much trouble breaking down, um, the reason why it broke up is very simple. The reason why it actually broke up is because we see... Uh, an ascending triangle, just going upwards like that, right? I have a really dry throat. Let me just have a sip of my water here. If you guys are on the computer a lot, make sure you guys have a good humidifier. Make sure you guys have very warm lighting. I don't recommend like the very bright type or the cool lighting. I recommend um, 
to have like a very warm type of lighting just because it feels a lot better on you just feels a little bit cooler as well in terms of like temperature wise it's warm right i recommend getting a good humidifier as well guys make sure you got a really good chair especially if you're gonna spend time on it now my chair it looks like it's nothing right it's a little bit older now it's getting chipped here but this is a global roma 1907 chair i bought it for literally like 800 dollars or something and um it's a professional type chair that you would get in an office, right? And um, it's a really, really comfortable chair. So make sure you guys have one with a lot of good back support as well. Because I don't want to see anybody prone to injuries. And it can really happen, guys. I know these are really fatherly kind of tips. I am a father, keep in mind, right? I'm a father. I've got a little dog, Luna. <laughs> I do feel like a father to her. So this is the reason why it broke out, right? This ascending triangle was incredibly strong. The bulls kept defending, right? Bulls defended, bulls defended, bulls defended, right? Right, we kept pushing at the top there. We kept pushing at the top. We kept pushing at the top. How many times do we have to ask ourselves, right? We keep seeing ascending triangle. A series of higher lows and same highs. We ask how many times can the bears a bears um successfully defend before they give up and the bulls take over, which is kind of the psychology behind ascending triangle, right? So that's why a lot of the times, the bears can't simply defend. We just keep getting a series of a lower high, and the lower high, right, clearly implies. Um, that's why today, um, in the past few technical analysis, I was basically implying that um, the bulls are definitely gaining a lot of traction right now. Okay, they're gaining some traction, and that must absolutely be respected. So if I had to even I'm not even going to bother doing an Elliott wave count on here, okay? Because um, I'm going to do an Elliott wave count in the morning with you guys when I wake up. And we're going to do a very detailed one. But if I were to do a brief Elliott wave count, just very, very brief, okay? I'd see this perhaps as... um. Uh, I'm going to go even lower down here, okay? I see this as... um. Like... Actually, I was just going to clear all this up because we're done with that theory right now, okay? That if we do break up, right, let's, I see this as perhaps one, two. I see this as perhaps three, um, four, right? And, you know, a five could still be somewhere around this vicinity, like still, because this could just be one, two, three, four, five, like making a really crappy channel in an, uh, and like an ending fifth wave diagonal kind of thing, right? that they could very much so be like that but i'm not even going to bother creating a chart for that um this i kind of see as a channel right now okay a channel where the fifth wave could be formed um, let's see actually i don't see it yet as a channel but um let's see if this can actually make a channel right let's go to a very low time frame and just see right now like we, we see some bull trapped region right that's a bull trapped region very clearly Right, this is a bull trapped region. Um, let's even go to a lower time frame just to see if this channel is, is going to hold. This channel has been holding for how long already? A uh, channel for the past seven hours thus far, right? Can this be considered a channel? Can this be considered a channel? It has held for seven hours with um, fairly relevant points, okay? Right, fairly relevant point. I mean, we're getting like this region there, there, there. Right, that's that's basically four relevant point. This one would be a bull trapped region, bull trap region, and this one right here actually held. You know, there it's holding there so far already. So let's see, right? And if if we actually trend like this, right? Um, you know. Tr the trend of a, of, a, of a channel is really important, or the angle of it, right? If it's trending like that, then that's very, very angled and a very strong uptrend. But we're getting one more like a sideways trend almost, right? Almost like a sideways trend. So um, I really can't see it getting higher right now than, than higher than, than, you know, 9,300. It just seems like it's at the point where nothing's really going to happen there, guys. It's just got to 
really run its course in my personal opinion and we just got to give it time to see how this is actually going to settle outwards right now and once we hit these really high points right um, i mean we're going to take it one step at a time guys okay one step at a time um i'm going to say right now the next next possible region if we break you know if we break this high in my opinion 9307 okay if we break uh, 9307 actually I shouldn't write that there yet okay the next region like this is target 2 right this target 2 and target 1 is roughly 95 9500 and 9900 I'll say okay if we break uh 90 what was the high again I just got to be double sure 93 we literally hit the target on those 9307 okay if we break 9307, a reasonable target is 9095, 529 is T1 right here. Okay, target 1, 9529, and then target 2 would be um, target 2 for target 2 would be 9900 basically okay 9900 not 10k yet okay not 10k yet we gotta keep that kind of off the table for now that's the that's the bear that's the bullish view that's the bullish view up here we'll see bullish possibility and of course, right, the bearish possibility is that we find it breaks down, okay? Um, I actually should write this in here. I'm very finicky when it comes to is the above. I'm very finicky when it comes to annotation because um, <laughs> I studied math and engineering, right? So with math and engineering, you kind of get very picky about how you write things. Um, so the bullish, the bearish view is, um, you know, correcting back down to 9067 to, <laughs> to um, whatever this range is, right? 9067 to right here, 89, 87, 8750 range, right? If we break down a very reasonable support, okay, is if we break down a reasonable support one is um 9067 and then support two support two is 8750 actually so that's how we're gonna play it we're gonna play it one step at a time one resistance at a time okay guys that's how we're gonna do just for now so we have to be completely aware of these possibilities. Now we're going to go over RSI and MACD just to show you guys where we look like we are actually trending right now. So let's go over that as well. After I post, I paste this. Okay, let's go over this now. We take a look at the RSI and the daily. It's actually not anywhere close to being overbought yet, right? But it does look like it's ready to snap down, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like it's just ready to snap down? Looks like it's kind of overly extended here, right? Doesn't it? It just looks like it's just so ready to snap down, like to break out of here right now. Uh, however you look at it, it could be like a leading first wave diagonal, right? Just like that. And um, another really important distinguishment I need to make is like on the four hour, um, we, this looks like it just it's going to get a very small tick and it just curves right down. Right, we ended up getting a shooting star already on the four hour right here, and it actually rejected 9300 to 9200 range, which is a $100 rejection. And then here as well, we don't really have any type of bearish signs yet. Nothing, we don't have any type of bearish signs except for perhaps, um, you know, the, the histogram on the three hour chart just looks like it's really much so leveling off. Okay, the histogram on the two hour chart really is starting to look very weak right here. We have to make note of that, right? Histogram on the two hour chart is starting to look weak. It's 
So let's make note of this as well. This is more of a bearish sign and that always needs to be made note of. Uh, we, once again, we try to look for bearish and bullish signs from all across the board to see what direction it tends to lean more towards. And I always offer bull and bear scenarios, right? Like if it goes bull, great. I'm ready to buy upon breakout all the time. I'm ready to hit my target ranges with the clear resistances that I've identified. If it actually goes towards the bear side, then great. I might consider going to a short position or I might consider accumulating and dollar cost averaging as it hits these near support regions for a possible bounce. So we have to take a look at it that way all the time, right? Uh, we don't really see anything yet, but we see um, you know, the histogram starting to get very weak on the 45 minute chart. Um, really weak, super weak. Uh, we don't know how far this is going to go down, though. Like, let's um, you know, is let's just say on the forty-five minute chart, histogram looks like it may approach negativity soon. Um, do you guys know what I mean by negativity? <laughs> I mean the um, negative side. Forty-five minute histogram. Uh, will the forty-five minute chart histogram approach the negative? side if so macd crossover traders uh you know we'll end up we'll we'll profit take we'll profit take or <laughs> profit take we'll take profit so we have to always keep this in mind when it gets a negative side this is the negative side right where it crosses over to the uh, from positive to negative on the zero bar and Let's just keep going right there, okay? Um, and yeah, we don't really have any signs of it slowing down quite yet. We do see a diminishing volume right now, right? We see a d diminishing volume on the 30-minute chart, um, almost next to nothing here, right? So the bulls need to sustain in some way. Uh, what does the volume? What does this volume indicate? We have to ask ourselves, okay? Does this volume indicate? Uh, let, let me explain to you guys what I'm talking about here, okay? We have to rhetorically ask these questions all the time. Does this volume, does this uh, diminishing volume indicate one, bulls cannot sustain this, um, bulls cannot sustain this price range? Or two, um, or two, um, um, no one wants to sell their BTC. So I, I see a lot of, um, or three even, or three, um, well, bears take profit, right? So we have to ask a lot of these questions all the time. And um, we're not really sure of which scenarios it can actually play out to, right? It's just a matter of giving it time. So I, I'm um, definitely just going to be very patient here. Okay, I've, I've laid out the foundation for you guys of both the bull and the bear scenarios. If it actually does, let's just do a recap on this, okay? So what we notice is that this whole region, 92 to 9300, is actually acting as a very strong resistance right now, right? As indicated from many regions ago. This, the reason why we broke out is because ascending triangle, right? Uh, ascending triangle, series of lower highs, same highs. We asked how many times can the bear successfully defend? Um, I'm actually going to move it over because I believe in st strong structure. Okay, there we go. So, um, yeah, so how many times could they actually defend until, you know, it take, gets taken over? And then we see this is a bull trap region. Can this be considered a channel? It has held for seven hours with fairly relevant points so far, right? And we see lots of hurdles, right? If it actually does break up, if it break above 93.07, a reasonable target is the above. T1, 95.29. T2, 9900, right? If we break down a reasonable support, 9067, support 2, 8750. Because I'm a day trader, I trade it one step at a time. Now we look for signs that might lean one way more than the other. Histogram on the two hour chart is starting to look weak. Will the 45 minute um, chart histogram approach the negative side? Rhetorical again. If so, MACD crossover traders will take profit, right? Does this diminishing volume indicate bulls cannot sustain the price range? Or no one wants to sell their BTC? Or will bears take profit? 
And that concludes the video, guys. It was kind of a long video. I apologize. I forgot that my hair is in a pineapple right now. So um, I'm actually going to head to bed now as soon as I finish managing some of my positions and reviewing a little bit of IOTA and EOS so I'm prepared tomorrow. Every day I wake up, guys, um, the coins that I, I do, I, I, list, I, I scan my list, right? I scan my list, I look at coin market cap, I see where my six coins have actually trended for the day that I follow. I only allow myself to trade six coins, or actually five coins. I don't trade more than that ever, okay? I only, like today it happened to be um, EOS, XRP, IOTA, LTC, and also BCH. I haven't touched Litecoin in a very long time, I have to admit, or Ripple. I've been mainly focusing, if you guys have noticed, on EOS, IOTA, and BCH. So every every morning i scan through my my coins here right i look at volatility on bitfinex as well to see which coins have had the highest movement combined with the most volume as well and volatility because i look for liquidity when it comes to trading liquidity and volume is incredibly important with volatility and then after i get my list of what i want to trade right i plan for the day what are some possible good setups to take right and I wait very, very patiently for my scenarios to actually come to fruition, right? And then I trade for the day, whatever. I watch movies. I, just, I honestly just watch movies most of the day after I finish trade, after I, I plan my setups, which takes about an hour or two. And then after that, I, um, you know, at the end of the night, especially, I review all of my coins, especially Bitcoin, because um, I need to know exactly what to expect the next day. I need to know what my altcoins are possibly going to be doing as well. Because it's so important, guys, for us to um, to gauge, okay? Very important for us to gauge and, and have a, a good idea of what the coins we're tracking are going to do. So it's a lot of hard work. And then I wake up in the morning, and even though I studied the night before, I study the next day as well. So the studying is actually nonstop. You got to have make sure, you got to make sure, like, I keep this little book here. It's a novel, but I write over it. I write. I write. I like to write over books, right? That's kind of my thing. I have a lot of novels, and I like to write over them with a hard, like a you know, ink pen. And then um, yeah. So make sure you guys are studying and putting a lot of hard work as well. And we will review everything tomorrow when I wake up. So have yourselves a great. I'm sorry if this was kind of preachy. If it was kind of ranty in some way, you know, um, I don't I don't mean to, to make it sound like that. It's just because I I just want to make sure I'm doing an OK job of helping you guys. And let me know about that RSI lesson class that you guys that I brought up for you guys. Right. And um, if you guys love my content, please upload it on Steam. It. If you guys especially love it, you're welcome to buy me a lunch or a dinner or a beer by donating a small amount to the cryptocurrency piggy bank. Not that I need you guys to, but it's just your way of showing appreciation and just saying thanks. That's it. So don't think that I'm here to get your donations or anything in any way, all right? So have yourselves a great night. I am going to do a few more things, study a little bit more, and then I'm going to head to bed. Good night, guys. Take it easy.